How's it going everyone? After we had a quiet weekend, we are back in the thick of things and I want to go over some great PS4 and PS5 game deals that are available right now. This is particularly on the physical side of things. Obviously, the summer sale is running right now. We already covered that pretty in depth. I think we're going to do one more video taking a look at it, but there are some pretty good physical deals as well. Some that beat out the summer sale, some games that weren't even on sale during the summer sale, and some that just have straight parity with the summer sale. So if you want to get the physical version versus the digital version, this would be a good way to do so. We're going to be looking at some Amazon and Best Buy deals. But first up, I do want to take a look at the Amazon deals where there is quite a few good ones. Um, first of all, we have Mass Effect Legendary Edition, which is hitting you low at $38.34. I believe it hit $45 uh, on the summer sale, which is a pretty decent price, but now even cheaper than that. And I'll be honest, I didn't expect this to get much cheaper, um, you know, in the relative near future after its release. It came out back in May, so it's been like three months, which, you know, being over to, uh, you know, around $20 off three months after release is pretty typical these days. I mean, sometimes you have games that have their price uh, slashed in half after a month, so I just figured that Mass Effect Legendary Edition would hell hold up in price a little bit longer, but a $38.34 is a pretty good deal. I think some people were disappointed about the fact that, um, you know, the game wasn't a complete revamp of Mass Effect 1 in particular that I think a lot of people had hoped and wanted. Like, the game is definitely better than the original form, but man, it still shows its age quite a bit. Mass Effect 2 holds up really well. I still think Mass Effect 2 is one of the best RPGs of all time, and Mass Effect 3 I thought was quite good, but obviously everybody's talking point with that game will always be the ending. But for the most part, the game is still really good. And all three of the games for 38 34 I still think is a pretty good pickup. Honestly, now that I'm seeing this game fall in price more and more, I could easily see this being a $29.99 during Black Friday time. So I don't think if you pick it up, if you miss out on it now, I guarantee you it's probably going to get cheaper. And Black Friday being 30 bucks seems to make quite a bit of sense. All right, moving on from that on the PlayStation 5. You guys know I'm going to shill for this game for the rest of the year. Scarlet Nexus is getting a little bit cheaper. It is $45.99. Now, this came out about a month and a half ago. So it's slowly dropping in price. This is another game I could easily see that at the $35 range by Black Friday. So again, if you don't pick it up now, not the end of the world. I always like to talk this game up because I was a gigantic fan of it. Maybe I like this game a little bit more than most people for a variety of different reasons. But as far as JRPGs go, love this game from a music standpoint, story standpoint, character standpoint, and gameplay standpoint. Uh, there were some issues with like redundant enemy types and redundant environments. But if you can get past that, uh, the good definitely outweighs the bad here with Scarlet Nexus, and I just had a great time with it. Um, again, quite a bit of content, considering that you do ideally want to play the game twice as each character, Yuito and Tasane, and uh, both playthroughs are relatively long, so uh, you're probably going to get 40 to 50 hours of gameplay out of this one, and overall, I just thought the game was really good, and hopefully me talking it up will not only get you guys to pick up a pretty good game that went a little bit under the radar, but also... Um, you know, hopefully this game gets enough recognition over the years where we can get a follow-up because I think there's a lot you can do. I think they laid the groundwork for something that could be pretty special, and especially if they iron up some of the issues with a potential follow-up title, I think it could be something notable. Nevertheless, $46 for that is quite good. Also want to note, It Takes Two uh, is seeing a new low at $24.99. This is, of course, a co-op only title, but if you pick up the game, your friends can jump in with co-op play for free, so that is something to note as well. If you're wanting a co-op game, Haze Light has really become the premier studio for developing high quality co-op titles. Of course, they did a way out as well. It Takes Two is a little bit different from a thematic standpoint, but if you're into co-op games, definitely something to check out. $25, and uh, yeah, just make sure you have somebody to play with, because it is obviously a co-op-focused game. Next up, Nier Automata Game of the Yorha Edition, down to $24.94. So this game's MSRP actually recently got slashed from $40 to $30, and that's good to see. This game held up in price for a ridiculously, ridiculously long time. Um, maybe rightfully so. I think Nier Automata is an excellent game. Obviously, Nier Replicate just came out, so Nier as a franchise is a little bit relevant, and Near Replicant came out like a couple months ago, but you guys get the deal. It came out this year. Um, I love Near Domino. I think it's better than Near Replicant, obviously, from a gameplay standpoint. Platinum Games did a phenomenal job and still retains the excellent music, storytelling, and, um, you know, visual style that uh, Near is known for. And from a music standpoint, I mean, Near is right up there with, like, some of the games that I always talk about from a soundtrack standpoint. The World Ends With You, Near, Final Fantasy, even. 
Square Enix uh, does a pretty good job with their sound direction, so there you go with that. Speaking of Square Enix and jumping on over to some of the Best Buy deals, Dragon Quest XI X, uh, excuse me, Dragon Quest XI S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition is $20 off for $19.99. I believe this is the cheapest we've seen DQ11 for. It's a very good traditional JRPG. If you want something that sticks to the roots of what Dragon Quest is and the roots of what JRPGs were, um, DQ11 modernizes it enough where it's a compelling experience, but also at the same time, you have the fundamentals in place that uh, classic JRPGs have as well. Obviously, Dragon Quest, uh, I believe, 12 uh, got announced. It's going to go in a more mature route, so looking forward to that. But DQ11, solid game, pretty lengthy as well, so check that out if you're interested. Final Fantasy VII Remake is down to $29.99 on the PlayStation 4. Obviously, this will get you an upgrade to the PlayStation 5 version. That upgrade is not available to PS Plus owners of the game, so... That is something to look at. The PlayStation 5 upgrade of this game is tremendous. Um, I'm literally playing through the game again just because of the performance upgrade. I think it looks beautiful. 60 frames per second, yes. Uh, that is just a complete game changer for the game. Any game for me, but $30 for that is quite good. Check it out. I've talked about it at length. You guys know the deal. Witcher 3 Wild Hunt 1999. The upgrade is not available at this stage of the game, but it is coming. I'm sure it's going to look quite good on the PlayStation 5. Um, this has been cheaper from the digital front, but I don't think it gets cheaper than $19.99 physically, so that's a little interesting, but uh, yeah, 20 bucks for Witcher 3, Hearts of Stone, Blood and Wine, a bunch of other DLC. Game itself is great. 20 bucks for that is a no-brainer. Immortals Phoenix Rising from Ubisoft is $35 off for $24.99. This is a game that got, you know, one of those games, like I mentioned at the top, like a month after release, we were seeing it for a heavy, heavy discount. Now it's $24.99, um, which is a decent price. I mean, I like this game a lot. Uh, it was a new IP that initially Initially, I just knew going into the release of this game, I'm just like, man, this is not going to do well from a commercial standpoint, and lo and behold, it didn't do very well from a commercial standpoint, but the game itself is pretty good, and if you want an artistic game, a pretty colorful game, um, that, you know, isn't like too, too mature... I think you are going to end up enjoying this. I highly doubt we'll ever see a follow-up to this game just because I don't think it did very well. And it seems like Ubisoft's MO is now moving to live service games, which uh, that, that's just vomit-inducing. But nevertheless, this game is pretty good. Uh, lastly, there is a section on Best Buy where it's just a bunch of PlayStation deals. They're doing some PlayStation Summer Sale. Uh, a lot of parody with the deals, again, that are available on the PlayStation Store. Last of Us Part 2 is $20. Ghost of Tsushima is $30. So, I mean, if you're one of those people that are not not high on the price point of the upgrade you can get this for 30 bucks and then you can get the ps5 upgrade for 30 dollars and you're essentially already saving 10 bucks on the uh price point of the playstation 5 upgrade so that is something you can think of and uh the game itself is obviously excellent i've talked about ghost of tsushima at length it was my favorite game of 2020 uh with ff7 remake being a close number two but excellent game returnal 49.99 eh i think you should wait on a sale for it. like a lot of people i like returnal but a lot of people when i talk to a bunch of people that picked up this game and i would say more often than not people were really really turned off by some elements of the game the difficulty the checkpoint system yeah if you waited this long might as well wait for it to get a little bit cheaper i could see a 40 uh, 30 to 40 dollar price point by this fall mlb the show 21 is 40 bucks marvel spider-man game of the year edition 20 dollars um death stranding 20 dollars a day's gone 20 bucks demon souls 50 so Miles Morales, 40. Sackboy, a big adventure, 40. Uh, Miles Morales Ultimate Edition, 50. You know, a lot of deals that we've seen pretty regularly, but I thought I'd give mention to that as well. But that's going to wrap up this one, guys. A uh, little bit of a break over the weekend. Had to take care of some things, but glad to be back. And uh, let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. We'll be talking about some more stuff very, very soon. Some pretty big news breaking, especially in the Nintendo Switch world. But, uh, you know, we don't talk about that too much. But, yeah, definitely a lot of gaming news to talk about and catch up on. But that's going to wrap it up. For me, let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye.